Kennedy Carpenter, you remember him from last year. We were putting the rocket stove in 1.0. This is 2.0. We've had some time over the winter to play with it. And well, I've made some significant modifications to it. I added some insulation uh, with aircrete around the burn chamber, made the burn chamber smaller, built a new heat riser. And so we got that, all those modifications done. And the main element of it, the main modification was my hot air vacuum. That's what I call the chimney because it just sucks so hard. It's a aircrete insulated chimney. Hey guys, so I'm probably going to have some coughing kids in the background, so bear with me. We've had a couple of rough three days. But I wanted to come on and let you know before it was over that Darwin and Melanie over at the Honeydew Carpenter are doing their Kickstarter for their portable Aircrete rocket mass heater stove plans. They are needing to get the funds together to be able to get the testing done on the stoves about emissions and efficiency and overall safety and they can't do that without a shop and without being able to actually create some more prototypes of the stove and they have some fun rewards on there that I think are pretty neat. The one that I'm doing is the fire starter. They have these little fire starter pellets that will um, stay lit in 50 mile an hour winds which is really nice in a really super efficient rocket stove because the rocket stove a lot of times will suck the flame off of conventional fire starters. And I'm going to put some clips in here showing you my rocket stove. The one that he's offering will be 3.0. The one that I currently have is 2.0. And the reason he's doing that is because a lot of people don't have access to um, the materials and maybe the skills that they need to be able to build the one that he did for me out of junkyard trash to all intents and purposes that's what it was um, what he's putting together is a plan that you can take in to a welder or a machinist and have the parts uh, cut and bent into place and then they just need to be welded in place and then all you need is your uh, aircrete foam generator and then you can make your own stove currently they are allowed to be used in shops and garages and that kind of thing and again hence why he needs to be able to do the testing is to get them approved for sale to be put into people's homes. Now 1.0 the rocket stove that we started out with was just the stove and um, the air creep made it light and made it portable and the thing that we were really struggling with was getting that intense heat to go out the flu on very cold days. We initially started out with a, a regular tin chimney and we had a lot of creosote and junk water coming back down the pipe on very cold days. It was really distressing, it was really frustrating. And the house was, um, I'm trying to, that, yeah, that first version, it, it overheated so badly. Our whole house was just so hot. It was miserable in order to get it hot enough that the that the smoke would flew out correctly. It was just so hot in our little cabin. So 2.0, really the only thing that changed there was that uh, Darwin and I did some brainstorming about what seemed to be the problem. Well, why don't we do one more uh, aircrete experiment? Aircrete is super, super light. Can we fill the space between two differently sized chimneys with Aircrete and would it work? The first time we used that Aircrete chimney, we used it with the bench. The bench had already failed with 1.0. It had already failed with the original tin chimney and it would not draw and it was just a mess. We put the Aircrete chimney in and there was an 18 inch drop from the stove into the bench and then six feet out to the end of the pipe and then six feet back to the beginning of the pipe to go up and out the window and there was no exhaust there was no issue it flew perfectly as long as we warmed the chimney up a tiny bit before we redirected it so it is a work of art the stove it is amazing every time that he made an improvement on the stove we would take the stove apart check for creosote check to see if everything was burning check to see that the aircrete heat riser was still intact and so every time we added something new on, that's what we did. We took it apart and we put it back together. And this uh, fall 
was it fall? Was it early fall? Was it August? Maybe it was August. This last August, because we didn't need the stove, but we knew we were going to need it soon, that's when we took it apart again. There was zero creosote at all. There wasn't creosote in the bench. There wasn't creosote in the stove. There was not creosote in the chimney. There was no creosote. We were using very little wood and we were incredibly comfortable with 2.0. 1.0 was tricky because of the chimney, but 2.0, we were able to run the stove for a little while, warm the pebbles up in, in both heat masses. There's a heat, uh, there's, um, there's the pea gravel mass around the heat riser, and then there's the pea gravel in the actual uh, bench, the mass bench. So we were very comfortable in it. Even if there was just a little bit of a nip in the air, we could use that stove and it wouldn't heat us out of the house. It was just the perfect amount of heat. And we could remove or add pebbles around the heat riser so that we had more radiant heat into the room or so that it soaked into the pebbles and the heat was slower. We, the other amazing thing was the valve that allowed you to have the heat go up the chimney or go into the heat bench, the mass bench. That was really important because you, it was very nice to be able to let that chimney heat up a little bit before you directed it into the bench. What's the other thing? Um, the bread oven that he made that goes on top of my stove, on top of the rocket stove was amazing because a lot of times if you're trying to bake in a conventional wood stove, a wood cook stove, you have to get it up to temperature and it can be very uncomfortable to live in the house while cooking in the house because of the temperatures you need in order to cook efficiently. And that was not the case with my uh, Aircrete bread oven because it would fit on top of the stove over the heat riser and I would increase the wood and I would direct the exhaust out the chimney so that it was very fast high heat but all of the heat was trapped in the oven it didn't radiate out into the room at that point so it was still lovely and very comfortable so hopefully that was helpful I will put the Kickstarter link in the description below also the link to their Etsy store you can buy their foam mate which is how they make their aircrete and their mixes there already but if you want the plans for their um, rocket stove itself so that you can take it and have it made by somebody local to you, then uh, go take part in their Kickstarter. I will say that the cost of when, when Darwin went and, and checked out the cost of having somebody make it local to him, the average cost was $1,500 to take that schematic in and say, here, build this for me. In our area to get a good wood burning stove just in a in a you know not on craigslist but going into an actual wood stove store the average cost was about twenty five hundred dollars for a new stove and that was just one of those little box type stoves where all the heat rises out the chimney so that if, if you're not handy that would be about what it would cost you to have that stove made if you are handy, obviously you could go to a junkyard and make the stove yourself, or um, if you have a press, you could you know, press the pieces out yourself. Um, we really love Darwin and Melanie, and they are the brilliant, wonderful, loving people who made our off-grid experience enjoyable. If we hadn't had that rocket stove, it would not have been enjoyable. It would not have been easy to be off-grid without it. Uh, our winters are just too extreme, but also our house was tiny and even though the walls and the ceiling were insulated, the floor was not insulated. We really needed an efficient stove that wasn't going to use a lot of wood, but also a stove that wasn't going to heat us out of the house. So it was perfect. And we love them and we hope you'll go check them out. I will also put in cards to their channel, The Honeydew Carpenter, and we'll talk to you guys later. Okay guys, so you hear that roar? That's not the wind. That's the stove. So. In a regular wood burning stove, a roar like that would mean you have any kind of creosote in that chimney and you're going to have a, a chimney fire. That's the sound of a chimney fire in a normal stove. So the beauty of the rocket stove, and especially this one, is that because it's insulated, the chimney's insulated and there's no creosote, it can have that scream and burn with those high temperatures, but you're not going to have to worry about your house burning down because it's all so well contained and there's no creosote buildup. So I'm super, super, super excited. Well, there even this one starting to get a little warm. A little bit because it's not but completely filled. This is filled here. Really cool here. So yeah, that's hot. Hear that? 
I'm starting to smell this. That is the, a rocket scent. It, the, moisture the, from the rocks. The rocks are starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah, you can smell the dirt and the moisture off of them. Whatever I did, I fixed it right. <laughs> 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 I am so, so, so excited. Thumbs up. Yeah, Thumbs up. I would have, but all I have is pliers. I don't have my blue gloves on. <laughs>